in um, 10.25, uh, we're carrying on with gene linkage, right? We're still looking at linked genes here, um, but they want you to be able to identify offspring, so the babies, um, that have been created due to this thing called recombination. And recombination simply is crossing over, and you all should remember what that is. So in the previous video, we were talking about how there's basically only really two situations here. We can have uh, a combination where you have the big P with the little P, right? Big P, little P, and the big L and the little L. So those are our two linked gene combinations, and that's it. But what if crossing over occurs? So if crossing over occurs, those alleles switch spots. So now we have the, in, in addition to these normal um, combinations, now we have the other ones. So if we look, look at this one, now we have a little p with a big L, right? And here we have the big P mixed up with a little L. So it gave us two more um, combinations of alleles that could end up in a sperm or an egg, end up in a gamete. So let's see how good you are. Let's, um, let's practice on this one. In this, uh, in this example, we're looking at um, corn and whether the kernel, like the little piece that you eat, um, has color or no color, and also if it's waxy or not waxy. So as you can see on the right-hand side here, color, color is dominant. So big C would equal color, little c would equal no color, big W would make it waxy, little W would make it not waxy. Um, and they're taking, they're asking us to cross. So one of the parents, one of the parents is homozygous dominant at both loci. So what would that look like? So if the parent was homozygous dominant at both loci, we would have a big C and a big C. Remember, we, we put our chromosomes, knock them down. And also dominant for both wax, waxiness. So it looked like that, big W, big W. So those are the two chromosomes that have both dominant traits. And if we were going to cross it with a heterozygous individual at both loci, it would be um, a big C and on the other chromosome, and it's such a chromosome, it would be a little c, and then we have the dominant big W and also the little w. So what would happen if we cross those? So let's do a Punnett square like this. And let's find out. So for this individual, we can have a C or a W go into a gamete, or we could have this big C and big W. And there's no, there's no sense to even do that because it's going to be the same ratio. So let's not even waste our time because it's going to give us the same results. And for these, we can have a big C and a big W, or we could have the little C and the little W, right? Also, if crossing over occurred, these two alleles would switch spots. So we also need to take that into consideration. So let's write down those possible combinations. So we could have a big C with a little w, and we could have the little c with the big w. And let's cross them. So here, big C, big C, w, big w, big w. Here we have a big C, little c, big w, little w. So this would be the offspring if there was no recombination, if it was regular. So big C, big C, big W, big W, that would be regular. And also big C, little c, big W, big W would also be regular. However, if crossing over occurred, we could get a situation in an offspring where we'd have big C, big C, big W, little w. That would be this one. Or big C, little c, big W, big w, which would be this one. So that would be our other recombination. And these two, right, are impossible to get because of whether it was crossing over or not, they would not occur. So that would be like a typical challenge question they might ask you on the IB about um, what are the possible offspring based on regular crosses or if they happened um, as a result of crossing over.